Hey everyone, I'm Alfred. Welcome back to Dishonored. We were chasing down Sokolov. I wanted to talk a bit more about the Outsider because I find him very interesting. Um, considering that all the whale charms, like all the bone charms are made out of whale bone, uh, and that... Uh, like, whale oil, which is possibly fat, possibly ambergris, possibly blood. Like, creates electricity. And, you know, a whole bunch of other stuff. It's possible that the whales are, like, gods into and of themselves. Which would be kind of interesting. Um, the idea that there's just, like, this race of ultimate godlike beings that just live in the oceans. And then humans evolved, like... If I was a rat, I could go through there. Humans evolved enough, um, technology and, and firearms and war to be able to, like, kill them on a regular basis. To the point where they can, like, establish an economy around... Oh, hiccups. Establish an economy around them. King Spirit Feathers in this fan. Is the implication that the bird got shredded up in there? Because that's cool. Uh, oh, hey. Made it around to here. Falling star. That one's good. That's cool. I'm sure I've got something in here I don't need. Yeah, that's worthless. And this. The fact that all of these are based around white rats is so interesting. Oh, wow. That's way quicker. That's kind of wild. Alright, back in. What was that all about? That's better. You'll go far, Grayson. Hmm. But yeah, like the idea that like every single Yeah, the idea that like every single whale in the in the sea is a god, that's really cool. There's a lot of really cool things about whales, like in general. There's this cool concept called whale fall, where like whales float ordinarily, right? And when they die, they slowly sink to the bottom of the of the sea. And because there's so many good nutrients in them, like I was talking earlier about how like there's a great deal of nutrients in whales. for me but listen nearby there's a partially collapsed building up on what used to be the third floor you'll see a painting i used to work there behind the painting there's a safe and the code is 294 oh i kind of want to kill him ah hardly worth it Two nine four, you say? Yeah. Ooh, gold ingots. Nothing like nothing quite like a gold ingot, you know. Just a brick of gold. Now, let's not forget that I had double jump. Uh, yeah. There's this cool thing called whale fall, where like. A whale will die and it'll slowly sink to the to the land beneath. And it just becomes this like inch mouth. I thought that said inns mouth earlier. Did this guy get crushed by the save? Because that's pretty sad. Even if he was trying to rob this place. Sucks. Um 
Yeah, Whale Fall's a really cool idea. Uh, there was this Tumblr post uh, uh, about, like, the idea of, like, gods dying. Um, kind of like Osiris. Because, like, Osiris died and everyone agreed on that, but, like, he's a god, so how can he die? And the answer is kind of just, like, he kind of did and he didn't, you know? Um, and there's stuff, like, talked about this in, like, um, oh, like, uh, Elder Scrolls 3 Morrowind, which I have a very long LP on if you would like to go watch it. I'd recommend it. It's one of my best. Um... I think this is I think the only way forward we have is like the forward forward so but you know got a wall scrape because you don't want to miss stuff even in a in a very violent like aggressive skip everything whatever you know fuck the world playthrough like this oh that's interesting those that get evaporated I kind of thought that they would have blown up Interesting. Well, anyway. Um. Hmm. Uh, yeah, there was this Tumblr post about how, like, what if a god dying, but, like, everyone still worships it, so, like, whatever. What if that was a thing called, what was, what if that was a thing like whale fall, you know? Where, like, the uh, um, the death of you know some important god like um, Lorcan slash Shore in the Elder Scrolls or like Osiris in from Egyptian mythology. Shh. That was really cool. That was really clean of me. Sorry, I don't know if it kind of undercuts the coolness to be like, wow, I did a great job. But I think I did a great job. So now I can run straight through there. Um, yeah, and that's another thing about um, like whale whale farming and whale hunting. There are some species of like animal that literally just live in or on uh, whales, you know, or they just really enjoy that. Is this just an oubliette? That's oh no, wait, this is a, this is an elevator. Um these things you would probably yeah. be dead by now. I love how even like in the society we're in they're still racist. Um, yeah, so, like, to deprive an area of, of its whale, you know, ordinarily, a whale is supposed to, you know, provide for a specific area for quite a while. And if that doesn't happen... Sleep. Unconscious. Cool. Anyway, the idea is that, like, the, the idea that whales directly combine both of those into one is, like, really, really cool to me. And for a while... It was my, like, headcanon or whatever that the the outsider is a whale who just chooses to look human. Which creates even more questions and problems and concerns about what the hell a whale even is in, you know, Dishonored. Yep. That ain't bad. That ain't bad. <laughs> Luckily, I saved earlier. Um, anyway, yeah, conceptually, that's what I think the Overseer should have been. Uh, apparently, he's not that in uh, the sequel. Or, no, the DLC, Death of the Outsider.
Next. Can someone help me? That's pretty gnarly, dude. Okay, this dude. There's this concept where they have, like, created mathematically pure music. Like, geometric perfection in their music, right? And it kills unholy things. And for a while, it was believed to be just, like, straight up pure superstition but it does work like it straight up does work i am hurt because of this music and that's kind of nuts and that's a really cool like concept as well the idea that like music can be a debuff is like certainly nothing new but the fact that music can buff and debuff and like it's not like a video game thing or not even like a like a thing where it's like oh you get another hit die or like let's just let's just depower this huh cuz i think if we walk sokolov through a wall of light by the way we can't kill sokolov I think if we walk Sokolov through a wall of light, uh, I think he'll get burned up. Because it'll count him as an enemy, naturally. Ah, no power. Luckily, we didn't destroy that other thing like I normally do. Um, yeah, I talked a bit about Whalefall. Yeah, the, the idea that everything magical just comes from, like, the... Well, this isn't actually where I wanted to go, so... Whoop. Nice open elevator shaft. Though that does make a nice shortcut. Rat dissection and a rat fetus. Rat notes. Now turn my hope. But yeah, I haven't talked about it yet, but this is the one, like, mission where you're not to kill your target. Unless you count Emily. But, like, it's where they tell you guy's name. They give you, you know, everything about him. But then you don't kill him. You're not allowed to, in fact. The other thing of, like, having to go out of your way and upgrade all of these... Or not upgrade, but, like... Thank you, whoever you are. Test subject 312. Interesting. Pain is horrible right now. 
So I'll just hide in a corner and leave when I'm feeling better. They kind of uh, brush over that fact. I mean, obviously, if you're going to cure the plague and, like, that's what you needed to do to do it, like, okay, I guess. But, like, still not cool, man. I recently played through Half-Life 2, and the little magnifying glass that they have actually magnifies. It blew my mind. I wonder, can we actually just teleport straight up here? Because... Yeah, I think we might be able to just teleport straight up here. That's interesting. Spread out. There's been word of a ruckus. No details yet. Uh, sir, I heard it was actually a fracas. That counts? You. Yeah, the idea of like getting Sammy to move forward so uh, we can rely on reliably have him. Uh, how about this? We can reliably have him pick us up. Because otherwise, the alternative is to carry this, you know, this incredibly heavy man all the way through the city, which is not really an option. Royal physician himself. He made a neat job of it. Drop him here and we'll be off. Mm. Alright, let's get him back. So I thought this mission was actually after the other one. 60 people killed. Followed the pearl thief. Freed the test subjects. Got Pratchett safe. Saved the woman from rats. Man. One of these days I'm going to have to do like a... Ugh. I guess that would be like... Well, I'm, I'm saying nothing now. I want to do a full 100% playthrough where I get everything my first time, no questions asked, no problems, you know. Problem solved, checks cashed, you know what I mean? And I kind of want to do it ghost because that is a, you know, end of loading screen thing. And I want to do it um, on the hardest difficulty. But... Maybe I'm setting myself up for failure to say all of those things. Because, like, I don't know this game super well. Like, I could probably do that for, like, Metal Gear Solid 3, because I know it really well. Or, like, maybe Deus Ex Human Revolution, because I know that pretty well. Alright, gonna skip through it. Uh, let me wind down. I'll say goodnight to Emily. Normally... I'm a natural philosopher, but today... If this game had a little bit more cutscene skipping, it would go even more replayable. So this thing is just straight up super useful in like every playthrough, but I straight up don't know if we'll need it. It's kind of weird. I'll get it just because I like it. I love the idea of having a quiet boot. Such laughter. And then they're singing the old songs, linking arms. But that was from a happier time. That was before the plague hit. So I've not commented on this, but this is a thing that the. Uh, th <laughs> I like straight up don't even get it. It's literally just a thing that the outsider gave us in addition to all the other stuff he gives us, which is, you know, just the ability to start taking levels in, in wizard. 
Um... Maybe if I go over here. Hey, yeah. Maybe it's this way. Son of a bitch. There you go. I was down here, actually, wasn't I? Abandoned apartment key. Oh, I think we actually get that later. This is a decent hub level, but like the whole world is so depressing that like I don't feel like the hub level is like a home, you know? Like there are some places in like a video game where like I'm like, yeah, that's like a home. I can hang out there like even something as dour as like a Dark Souls, I can still be like, yeah, this is a home base. Like the two Firelink Shrines are pretty all right. Majula is a little too big, I will say. Uh, if it had even more people living there, then hello? I don't know what to tell you, man. That's interesting. If Majula was a little smaller, if it had a little more people living there, it'd be pretty great. And like, even though those games are like really depressing, it still feels nice. You know, those places Please feel great. Be as quiet as you can. It took forever for Emily to fall asleep. Poor dear. It's okay, Emily. I'm here. She seems happier when you're here. I think. Though I think I her eyes are a little too small, or maybe her brow or forehead's too big. And, like, she still looks very human. And, like, I, I get that that might be a weird thing to say, but, like... Please. Please leave a candle for me. I, it gets dark in here, and I, I can't see my mother. It's just one of those things where, like, um... By making things a little inhuman, by making them a little less than normal, they are, like, a... Uh, uh, more recognizable, you know? Sleep over the covers. Yeah. Corvo, wake up. You were making funny faces while you were sleeping. I decided to nap here in your room while Callista was taking her bath. She told me if there's ever trouble, I should always run here. Calista will come get me when she's done with her bath. All right, I'm going to skip this. All right, somewhere in here we can actually see. Well, Mr. Your Lydia Sokolov has certainly recovered. A good night's sleep. I think somewhere in here we can actually see Calista taking a bath. The High Overseer is supposed to be the most pious man in the Empire. Yeah, that's another thing. Like, some of the some of the cast members are so like pompous. Attention, Dunwall citizens. I can I can admit it. Yep, here we go. Um, so hey, you know he's peeping. Looks, I was inventing a new kind of lock. I'm gonna skip his dialogue. Cause whatever. Uh, don't spy on people. That's creepy. I couldn't bear it if she knew. I know you're a man of honor, and I also know that you can kill me at any time. And for both of these reasons, I apologize and beg for your discretion. So yes, indeed, he is peeping on Callista in the bath. Now, I'm going to save here because I, I straight up don't want this to be considered canon for this playthrough because I don't like doing it. But there is something that I like about it. So she gets creeped out because I... I'm about to bathe. I don't know if about to counts. But if you say maybe you'd like company... Corvo, 
Under other circumstances, I assure you, I might welcome your advances. <laughs> so she's like, well, yeah, sure, I would totally if, you know, everything didn't suck. I can't believe this. When I took this job, they told me I'd work with good men. Ugh. I feel dirtier than when I started. So yeah, this is creepy. If you don't mind, obviously I'd like to be alone in here. So I'm gonna load that save. Can't you see I'm about to bathe? Whoops. I understand. It was an accident. We have such a hard time maintaining privacy in such a crowded house, don't we? So then if I talk to her a second time now, it would be a little obvious that that's not my intention. But like, you know, it's not like these doors lock. I mean, this has a keyhole, but it's not like everyone has the lock to it is what I mean. Uh, the key to it, rather. And like, it is a pretty small area. And that appears to be one of the only working bathrooms. I hope Sokolov will cooperate. I'd hope to have him paint my portrait again one day. Just me this time. A reference to the earlier portrait we found. Royal physician. I believe you and Corvo knew each other in former days. Unlike you, our friend Corvo knows what loyalty is. Bah. I am loyal to my inner spirit. You are the one consorting with the most wanted man in the Empire. This bit's boring, but like, that's okay. This is something this is one of those things where like it totally could have, maybe should have been a cutscene, and it should have been skippable, but you know. The ruthless tyrant bent on destroying the city, the heart of the Empire. You are mistaken if you think there's love between me and our Man, I heard that you can like but whatever you intend to do here, I assure you, I am beyond petty scared. If I don't scare you, oh yeah, this is this place is called the Hound Pits. I've heard of uh, so th presumably they keep one dog in each of these and then loose them to fight in the middle. How long do you think it'll be before um, also, minor thing, I, I kind of find it amusing that Emily initially lives... Yeah, I find it interesting that Emily initially lives with her uh, mother and then goes to live at the Golden Cat. And the name Golden Cat implies what it is. It's a gilded cage, you know? Like, it looks nice, but everyone there is trapped. The client's certainly less so, but... You're part of this rebel. Sorry, sir. I will tell you what you need to know. <laughs> I'm obliged to safeguard Dunwall's greatest intellectual asset. All right. He tells us that some lady has the information, or some lady's important. I hear you're off to the boils little bash tonight. I have just a tiny favor I'd like to ask. I don't remember if he's drinking in, in high chaos and low chaos. I think he might just be drinking just because. You'll know him. A rather brusque man. All right. We're going to do that because it's great. Oh, yeah, I find it amusing that um, Emily goes from living at the allegedly nice but actually crappy Golden Cat. And then she goes to the allegedly crappy but decent people and okay place to live, Hound Pits. And then there's also the whole, like, cats and dogs thing. Because it is. Hey, it's the best mission in the game. And much how... They don't give you a choice for Sokolov, and I feel like it's almost because they're like, hey, look, you can do this non-lethally. Just watch. Here's a mission where you have to do it non-lethally. I feel like they almost, like, show you, uh, uh, in a sense. Um... Yeah, I feel like they almost, like, show you, in a sense. Yeah, this is where tall boys first show up. Um, that you can do this non-lethally. I didn't think there'd be tall boys patrolling here tonight. Watch yourself, Corvo. Yeah, I think it is foggier and mistier for the high chaos. That mask of yours let you blend right in. Enjoy your evening out with folk quality. Better you than me. 
Yeah, I think the tall boy is just walking around. Um, if you're not. Yeah, I think the tall boy is just walking, and there's only one of them. There's me again. For... Yeah, that's the Pendletons. What was I talking about? I know I was talking about, um, Callista. Because I, I, I find it interesting that, like, she does comment on an interest in Corvo. And, like, that makes sense because, like, Corvo's hot. This is a known fact. Um, you know, he's hot enough for the Empress. He's definitely hot enough for, you know, random scullery maid. Now that I'm thinking about it, there's a few things where, like, I'm like, maybe, like, hmm. Uh, like, off the top of my head. Ooh, that's gnarly. Off the top of my head here, like. This dude, the guy who designed Half-Life 2 and this game, has a lot of similarities. Like, they both have these really burnt out, almost, like, Eastern European vibes. Um... In Half-Life 2, there's an enemy called a Strider. Uh, which is also, like, a very tall, you know, creepy thing. Going to a party, Corvo? Yes, I am. Uh... Yeah, they, they have a, um... Oh, that's gnarly. This very tall, creepy thing. Uh, much like the tall boys walking around here. Sheesh. <laughs> I totally forget even how to fight tall boys. That was more fatal than I expected. Right, I remember what I was talking about a little bit now. Um, in the same way that you have, like, the last mission to show you, like, hey, non-fatal is possible. I feel like this mission is almost intended to show you, like, stealth is possible. And here's the mission where you have, like, maximum stealth, you know? This is also a really good um, mission to, you know, be stealthy on. So don't draw your weapons. Invitation, please. So we picked this up earlier, but I think they hand you one. Uh, if you don't get one. So interesting, because you also get the ability to look at, um... I suppose we've no choice but to play. It's, oh, there went my invitation. Don't chase after that. You don't know what's in those chests. Oh yeah, so we can actually go find hers. Right, 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 right. We can actually go find hers and give it back to her. I'm sure she'd like that. Are you looking forward to the party? Pendleton? Is that you? So we're here with Pendleton's invitation. No, we're not here with Pendleton's invitation. This is what I get for not for not watching the cutscenes. Um but yeah, their assumption is that we're Pendleton, and like, in fact, he did send us. I want to talk about this for a sec. I really love this like off blue. Like, it's not a royal blue. It's not a navy blue. Um, for the coat, and then the like kind of dulled red. 
fun for a season, but now? What is it tonight? Guess which is which. Their hair and makeup are identical, but one's in red, one's in black, one's in white. Uh, yeah. So, they, they've commented on it, but there are three women walking around. This is another set of triplets for some reason. Hello. The Boyles hope you have a wonderful time. The fact that they have, like, straight up regular cops being their, uh, uh, their, like, you know... <laughs> We tried for Party guards and stuff. Man on duty is an ass. I should have taught him some manners. This party is a sham. I'm sure he's just this is another one of those uh, musical like purity things. Things are bad. Could the city get any worse? Yoink. Did you hear about Mrs. Grimsby? You'll never believe this. What is it now? She had her job a boy in the officers. street. Barely 16 years old. Oh, no fat. Left. I thought her interests were confined to her family. Hmm. I think she ran out of family a while ago. Yeah, there's a lot of cool, like, designs. How do you know this? My servants heard it from hers, naturally. They were sexual rights, I can only assume. Or else, I heard she... God, just the gossip. So, yeah, we can't go up there because, God, uh, if we could possess somebody... Oh, good whale. Good shot of a whale. Yeah, Careful. no whale on Earth looks like this. A gift from the Lord Regent, designed to keep his good friends safe. I doubt you qualify. So this is one of them. Welcome to my party. I don't believe you've had the pleasure. Also, a few people will comment on the fact that you're wearing a mask like the guys in those horrible uh, wanted posters, which is like super scary, but I love. They'll never miss it. This is based off of a, a whale. She has a moth. It's great. It's all really cool. I should be careful about that, actually. I trust you are on the guest list, sir. Oh, yeah, we can actually sign the guest list. Let me see if I can't. Yeah, here we go. Fountain pen. So if we sign it, we sign it as ourselves. We sign it as Corvo Atano. Which is like so funny. It's one of those things that makes me think that Corvo has a sense of humor. What a deliciously sinful mask. So we uh, need to figure out which one is which. And I think it's actually random based on what playthrough you're on. Uh, like, it'll be random for that playthrough, you know? What most people don't remember is... Excuse me. Hmm. I say nothing against the Lord Regent. He's the only... Uh, I'll, I'll mention it just because... The non-lethal kill for this, uh, for this mission is... Somebody says, hey man, listen. I know you're here to do something. Don't ask me how I know. In fact, let's make it a habit. So it didn't tell us that we'd killed her. Hmm. I think this is all going to hell. Uh. Yeah, basically, he's he says... What was that? Oh, I just knocked him down. Basically, he says, yeah, I know you're here to kill somebody. Don't ask me how I know. You don't have to kill them. You just have to give them to me, and I'll disappear them forever. You'll never, ever need to worry about them ever again. Don't worry about it. Just don't ask any questions. And you're like, all right, you're not going to ask me any questions. I won't ask you any questions. That's fine with me. Um. So then... 
So if you can possess one of these guys, then you're not a guest. You're one of them now, so. Um... So you kill one of the boils. Or no, you, you don't kill them. You um you knock one out. Uh, and then you drag her into the basement. And he has a bed covered in flowers. And then he takes her to... Uh, the basement has a little river that runs through it. The mansion is built over a little creek or canal. Um, which, you know, permits you to uh, take deliveries down there, but... He takes uh, uh, the Lady Boyle into a canoe, and uh, then you never hear from her again. And I remember it's one of my favorite moments in that original playthrough, because I'm I'm playing it with my wife, and she's like, "But what does he do?" And I'm like, "You never hear from her again." And he's like, "And she's like, but what what does he do?" And I'm like, "He said, don't worry about it." Go right ahead. Let your family. And she says, "Um," and I said, "He said, don't worry about it." And it's like, okay, how worth it is not killing people? I love that. Um, this episode's been going a bit long. Oh, my thing froze. Great. Um, this episode's been going a bit long, uh, so I'll cut it here, but I'll see you guys next time. Uh, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Have a good day, everyone. Bye.